Since early history, unexplained aerial observations have been a staple of human civilization. Although most of these early observations were treated as supernatural occurrences, they laid the foundation for further studies that would later be carried out. The invention of telescopes and space travel allowed scientists to observe and study distant celestial bodies, but despite their efforts, there is no evidence yet to support the speculations that there are other living creatures out there. However, these unexplained aerial observations are beginning to gain more attention recently. Just that this time, they are no longer treated as supernatural occurrences and may be in fact substantiated with physical evidence. These aerial phenomena that cannot immediately be identified or explained has remained a subject of debate among many. While some believe that they are hoaxes, others think that they are extraterrestrial spacecraft, leading to many unproven theories. Perhaps the most controversial case of such an event is the Roswell incident that happened in July 1947. A month before that time, a private pilot named Kenneth Arnold claimed that he saw some unidentified flying objects moving at a very fast speed. He described that what he saw looked like a flying saucer, and it soon became a hot topic for headlines. Shortly thereafter, rancher William Brazel reported to the Roswell authorities that he had found the debris of a crashed flying disc. On July 8, 1947, Roswell Daily Record published a front page article with the title, RAAF Captures Flying Saucer on Ranch in Roswell Region. This report attracted numerous news outlets, as well as the government who sent scientists to the scene to find out what was going on. However, when government scientists arrived at the scene, the story changed and the new report said that the crashed object was merely a weather balloon. A press conference was held and they showed evidence of foil, rubber, and wood, which matched the description of the weather balloon. Brazel admitted to the reporters the next day that he had paid little attention at first as to whether the debris from the wreckage consisted of rubber strips and tin foil. As expected, the story died the next day and would not resurface until 30 years later when a retired army officer confirmed that the story of a weather balloon was a cover-up for what happened. From this, many conspiracy theories came up that the government was trying to hide important information from the public. Some people claimed that Bezel's story of a flying disc was true and that there were real alien bodies in the custody of the government. However, in 1994, most of the information was declassified and the US Air Force published a detailed report of the crash. According to the report, the crashed object was a secret military surveillance balloon from Project Mogul used to detect atomic bomb tests in the Soviet Union. Nevertheless, conspiracy theories persisted and more publications were made concerning the topic. One of the most famous stories was the debris recovered by Brazel was nothing made on this earth and must have been part of an alien spacecraft that had crashed. In 1996, a sample was sent anonymously by a military source to the radio host of Coast to Coast AM, Art Bell. This was the same sample that was supposedly recovered from the Roswell incident by Brazel in 1947. Whether the source of this sample is from the Roswell incident or not, the sample is indeed very real. The material sample was multi-layered with a hair-thin layer of bismuth followed by a layer of magnesium. This type of combination does not occur naturally on Earth, so it had prompted several organizations including the government, to conduct several types of research on it. In addition, interviews have been conducted with experts from various academic organizations involved in special materials, but no data was found on anything related to the observed layering of bismuth and magnesium found in the sample. With no existing understanding, all attempts to duplicate this material have failed. No one knows where or why it was created leading to speculation that it must have been created with some sort of advanced civilization's manufacturing process. If this is true, then maybe this piece of metal is a remnant of an alien spacecraft. 
Despite the several setbacks that the study of this material has faced, we are beginning to understand more about it after many decades. Emerging studies of metamaterials may be able to shed more light on the properties of the sample. In 2005, a research study was published at Cornell University that postulated that a material created with a thin layer of bismuth, as in the case of the sample, must have some unique properties that are not yet fully understood. Such a material could potentially create a terahertz waveguide, a technology with several potentially advanced applications in medicine, security, communications, manufacturing, and many other industries. The bismuth magnesium sample has also been described to have the potential of an exotic material. Its unusual characteristics may make it function as a material with enhanced performance, excellent strength, and durability. Regardless of the mysteries surrounding this piece of material, there are also claims that it could be from Earth without any special use. In 1996, Nicholas Ryder was commissioned to investigate the bismuth magnesium sample, but it was not until five years later that he made a shocking discovery. According to him, the combination of bismuth and magnesium had eluded us for four years, but then one day we found a reference to an obscure industrial process used in the refinement of lead. The process called the betterton kroll process uses molten magnesium floated over the surface of liquid lead. The magnesium sucks up or pulls bismuth impurities out of the lead. Often magnesium is used over and over again. The betterton kroll process is an industrial process that has been used since 1922 for removing bismuth from lead. Could it be that this metal sample with remarkable properties has been promoted for years as a piece of alien technology, but was simply a piece of slag from an industrial process? And if so, how did an industrial byproduct evade identification for so long, and became a noteworthy example of a metamaterial, a characteristic only recently defined within an emerging field within material sciences?